Good evening, I'm Claudia Liza Armal. We start tonight on more on today's memorial service, marking six months to the day that a fire ripped through Grenfell Tower, claiming 71 lives, including 18 children. Well, it was one of the worst tragedies to hit the capital in London's modern peacetime history. This morning at St Paul's Cathedral, survivors and those who lost loved ones came together. Well, since the tragedy, the community in North Kensington has come together in many ways, but that night, lives were fractured. Many people lost more than one member of their family, and some of those affected were children. Catherine Carpenter has been to find out how they've been coping and about the help that's been available to them. Michael Defoe speaking to Catherine Carpenter. Well, to other news tonight, Boris Johnson has been called before the London Assembly to give evidence on the failed Garden Bridge project. Now to a family mystery going back more than 70 years. In 1943, a two-week-old baby boy was abandoned in a box on the steps of the BBC in London. Now aged 74, Robin King has spent most of his life wondering who abandoned him and why. Well, he was discovered by a BBC studio manager and this week the two were reunited. Steve Nibbs was there. Steve Nibbs reporting there. OK, that's it for me, but let's see how the weather's looking with Thomas Schaffernapper. Good evening and welcome to the programme. I'm Catherine Carpenter. After a decade of fundraising, a memorial has been unveiled in East London to honour those who died in World War II's worst civilian disaster. It's in memory of the 173 people who were crushed to death in Bethnal Green Underground Station in 1943. Tara Welsh reports. London has taken the fewest number of refugees following the migrant crisis than any UK region. Home Office figures show that of the thousands of people resettled across the UK, just 400 have found homes here in the capital. Helen Mulroy reports. Good evening, welcome to the programme. BBC London has found there's been a huge rise in the number of sexual assault victims coming forward to the Met Police. We've obtained figures that show reports have gone up by more than 7,000 in the last four years. Scotland Yard says it suggests victims are more confident that such crimes will be taken seriously. But support groups say many cases are still not reaching the courts. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Nick Beek, has more. The widow of a man killed when a plane exploded over Libya, killing 157 people 25 years ago, is demanding compensation. At the time, experts believed it was a mid-air collision, but since the fall of Gaddafi, there have been claims the plane was deliberately destroyed. That and the deaths of many other Londoners have all been linked back to his regime. But so far, no UK families have received compensation, despite Libyan assets in London being seized. Jim Weeble reports. Now, she's described it as a wonderful privilege. A former nurse in the NHS has been appointed as the new Bishop of London. The Right Reverend Sarah Mullally is the first woman to ever be appointed to the role, which is one of the most senior positions within the Church of England. Some of the first to meet her following the announcement might not be whom you'd expect. Here's our religious affairs correspondent, Martin Bashir. OK, let me wish you a very good night now and I'll leave you with Elizabeth, who's got the weather for us. Hello. Hello, thank you, Riz. Well, it was a lovely day today, wasn't it? We started off with a frost, it was crisp, we had lots of sunshine around. But this is more like what we'll be looking at tomorrow, or not looking at, as the case may be. An awful lot of fog forming overnight tonight. So as we take a look at the weather for the week ahead, we're talking about fog tonight, really quite widespread. Some of it will be freezing fog patches as well. It's really very cold out there. It is going to stay mild for much of the rest of the week though some milder air pushing our way from Tuesday onwards and it should stay mostly dry under the influence of high pressure now overnight tonight we've got conditions ripe really for a widespread fog fog we've got moist cold air around clear skies light winds temperatures will dip below freezing away from the towns and that fog is going to be very stubborn to lift and clear into tomorrow morning now we've got a Met Office weather warning out for the fog of course very poor visibility on the roads into tomorrow if you're traveling somewhere out and about on the rush hour or indeed if you're flying then do check before you go to the airport even uh, there will be very poor conditions keep up to date of course by watching BBC London in the morning and um, there will be some clearance of the fog I think particularly through the afternoon where we get the clearance it should brighten up temperatures between five and seven degrees but for many the fog could last into the afternoon and it will feel like a very bleak December day indeed by Wednesday we've got a little bit more in the way of brightness bit of hill fog around temperatures all the way up to 10 or 11 degrees Celsius and that's where they're set to 
stay actually on Thursday and possibly on Friday, just a couple of degrees lower. Then for the weekend, well, it's still going to be mild. It will be a touch breezier and it should be mostly dry. Let's get the national forecast now peering through the fog. Here's Darren Bett. Good evening and welcome to BBC London News with me, Victoria Hollins. The City of London contributes tens of billions of pounds each year to the Treasury, but there'll be no place for our financial sector in any Brexit trade deal. That's the message from the EU's chief negotiator, Michel Barnier. The government wants to secure new financial trading terms with Europe. But what happens if a deal can't be reached? Chris Rogers has been to find out. As we've been hearing, the ex-boyfriend of reality TV star Fern McCann has been jailed for 20 years after carrying out a brutal acid attack in a packed East London nightclub. Well, since the 25-year-old carried out his attacks, there have been growing calls for nightclubs to tighten up their security measures. Some venues in the capital have already taken steps to prevent acid being brought into their premises, as the number of incidents involving a corrosive substance continues to rise in London. Well, Caroline Davis is here with more, and, um, and I understand that the judge has, has talked about this increase. Yes, he did. So let's take a look at the scale of this particular issue. The judge said that in 2016, there were nearly 400 corrosive attacks, but this year, we'd already passed the previous year's total by the time it got to October, 424 attacks from January to October. Now. That is obviously a rise, but I should also stress that uh, these attacks are relatively rare, even though they are taken seriously. So how have nightclubs reacted to this? So nightclubs uh, clearly want to make sure that their customers feel safe, that they are a safe place to be. Um, so we spoke to one club who said that they had uh, taken police advice about what to do. Uh, they don't allow liquids into the club, so your bottle of water will have to be chucked away before you come in. But now they're also testing for perfumes and colognes and antibacterial gels. If you've got any of those in your bag, you'll be asked to test them out on this patch of your skin on the wrist uh, to prove that they're safe. So they're clearly taking this very seriously. Um, but we also spoke to people who obviously have a vast degree of experience on supporting survivors. And one particular charity we spoke to said that they hope that the law gets toughened up. So what is actually being done? Well, the Home Secretary uh, did launch a consultation uh, and that included ACID in October. Um, the consultation's closed, they're looking at the results. So I wouldn't be surprised if we hear more about ACID and the law that surrounds it in the near future. Okay, for now, thanks very much. An investigation is underway in West London after two young boys were found unconscious at an address in Perivale. Right, that's it for now from me. Let's find out what the weather has got in store for us all with Elizabeth Rizzini. Lizzie. Thank you, Victoria. Well, we had a very pretty, fiery sunset around today. You might well have seen it. And of course, we started off this morning with some fog and some frost. No such problems tonight. In fact, it's going to be really very mild indeed. We might just get a little bit of hill fog, but always plenty of cloud around into tomorrow morning. And for the rest of the week, we're looking at it staying mild. It should stay mostly dry with a few outbreaks of drizzle at times, possibly some more rain on Wednesday night into the first part of Thursday morning. And there'll be plenty of cloud around. In fact, it's going to feel quite grotty and grey for much of the week. Overnight tonight, we've got that milder air spreading in from the west. So we'll start off the day tomorrow with rising temperatures, perhaps uh, between 6 and 8 degrees Celsius, a big difference than what we had earlier on this morning, of course. And then tomorrow, well, you're not really going to see the colours on this map change very much. That's because it's going to stay grey and cloudy for much of the day, but it will be mild with temperatures all the way up to 10 or 11 degrees Celsius. And it'll stay mild for the rest of the week too. It should be mostly dry apart from on Thursday morning. Now with more in the national forecast, here's Ben. Good evening. You're watching BBC London News. I'm Claudia Eliza Armal. With train fares set to rise next week, a new poll reveals more than a third of Londoners believe commuter trains have deteriorated over the past year. And over half saying the capital's railway line should be taken over by Transport for London. Nicola Ford reports. A man who was jailed for throwing acid across a nightclub has admitted hiding a mobile phone inside the crutches he was using while in prison. Several flights out of the capital's airports were cancelled or delayed today after London and the home counties were hit by snow. Sleet and ice also made for dangerous conditions on the road. The heaviest snowfall was in Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire, as Caroline Davis reports. So will that ice and still be causing problems tomorrow? Here's Elizabeth Rizzini with the weather. Good evening. Lots of weather watcher pictures coming in today of the snowfall that we saw earlier on. Now, some places saw a good few centimetres. For many others, though, the snow was really quite fleeting and it turned quickly 
back to rain but snow's not going to be a major hazard overnight tonight instead everything that fell out of the sky the rain the sleet the snow is all going to refreeze onto the roads and the pavements so ice will be a major issue into tomorrow morning do watch out particularly on untreated surfaces temperatures away from the towns will all dip below freezing we've got a met office weather warning out for ice valid for much of the morning tomorrow but tomorrow does promise to be quite a pleasant day. Weather really much nicer than today. Lots of sparkling winter sunshine around blue skies for the most part. Just a lighter northwesterly breeze and top temperatures between 3 and 6 degrees Celsius. Still feeling cold and there'll be another frost on Thursday night into Friday. But on Friday the air turns milder. There will be some further outbreaks of rain and it will turn quite windy. And it promises to be a mild end to the year. Well, that's it for me. Sarah Orchard will be back with your morning updates during the breakfast programme tomorrow. Until then, have yourself a very good evening. Goodbye.